Some days ago I was looking for inspiration on the internet when it suddenly came up to this hand that looked really interesting to me and I spent my next few days finding a way to make my own version of it. I tried geometry nodes but they didn't work, but I did find some other cool ideas that I might bring to the channel soon. Then I tried the shader editor and I was having kind of success but I couldn't bring it all together until I found the way and my hand ended up looking something like this. And now I'm here to share my method with you. This is going to be very easy and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So without anything else to say, let's just begin. So of course the first thing you have to do is to download the model of the hand we're going to use and I'm going to leave this link in the description or, or if you want to search for it as well, you can find it in this page that I found just looking for random 3D hands on the internet. You just have to click on download and then click on this thing. This will download a little zip folder in which you will find another folder and you're going to put this obj format file in somewhere you can find it. I, I recommend you to put it in the desktop so you can find it easily. And now we're going to head up to Blender and first of all we're going to delete everything we have on our scene and we're going to go into file import and select the format that says obj and then we're going to go into our desktop or wherever you saved your file and then select it. We have it right now in your in our scene and as you can see it was huge so we're going to first press R, Y and 90 in order to rotate it and put it in the right direction and then press S and scale it a lot down once we have it something about this size you can take as a reference the grid that I have in the ground or the axis I'm going to press tab and alt S to scale a little bit the thickness of the fingers because I don't like how thick they were and now I like them more so once I have them like this this is totally up to you if you want to leave the thick fingers that you had at the beginning it's completely fine and now that I have my hand I just put it above the um, the floor let's say and we're going to press shift A and have two lights right here we're going to add one first that is going to be an array light and we're going to move it up with G and Z and we're going to press G and shift Z to move it a little bit to the side and then R to rotate it and for it to look towards our hand. Press shift D and duplicate this light, put it to the side and then press R and Z and rotate it for it to look towards our hand. The effect and the nodes we are going to use in the shading panel only work with cycles so in order to do it we have to choose the cycles render engine right here in this render properties and set your device into GPU and then change the max samples into something lower like let's say 200 that will be more than enough and now turn on the render view and check that these lights are indeed lighting your hand in case they're not go into your data properties well the light properties this little light bulb you have right here and set the power to something higher depending on how much you scaled your hand is the value that you are going to need right here so I'm going to use a value of 250 in the first light and in the other light I'm going to use a lower value let's say 200 now we're going to head up straight to the shading panel and we're going to select this hand and by default it has a well it has a material assigned and we're going to delete this material and then select on new and we're going to press shift a and s and add right here a noise texture that we're gonna plug into this base color and then press shift a and s and add a wave texture once you do this you can see where we're going with this texture we're going to scale it a little bit down and I'm going to use a value of 1.5 to start and maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller, maybe 1.2 will be perfect and set the detail to 0. Then go into the here where it says 3D and select 4D. That will open this W value that will let you animate your texture and maybe I will put my scale back into 1.5 and now we have something very similar to what we want to get at the end so I'm going to move this a little bit to the side and press shift A and S and add right here a color ramp 
this color ramp we're going to set it to constant and right now it turned all black and that's because we have to move a little bit in the controller for the white color and now we're getting the pattern we want to this place we're going to move this principled BSDF a little bit higher we're not going to use it right now and I'm going to press shift A S and add right here a displacement later on we're going to change this color ramp but for now it works perfectly I'm going to plug the color ramp into the mid level and the displacement into the displacement and now you can see that something kind of happened you can see like a little difference in the edges of our of our white sections but we're not seeing the the difference we want to see so first of all i want to disconnect the color ramp from the base color and then go into the material properties and down here you have these settings and then go in where it says displacement and change it to displacement only and then we're going to press shift a and press s to search and look for a vector math and plug it right here and set this vector math to multiply and now the displacement disappeared and that's because we multiplied this value by zero and we're going to multiply it now by two and now in order to see the effect we have right here we have to turn on the render view so we click it and now we can see what is happening with our mesh now what is happening is that let's say like the normal height of the hand is being the higher part of our displacement and we don't want that to happen so in order to change that we have to press shift a s and search for a math node plug it right here and set it to multiply and now we're going to multiply this value by minus one and now you can see that the white parts are above the level of the hand and the normal height of the hand is the the lower parts of our displacement so now i'm going to change these values back to one and see how that looks and i think it looks perfect so i'm going to leave it just how it is if you want to make more displacement right here you can just put a higher value into this multiply vector and as you can see we have some imperfections in the side of our of our displacement and that's because we have this color ramp into into constant and we don't have enough subdivisions in our mesh so we can fix it by making some subdivisions but that will make our scene kind of laggy so instead of that we're going to press select the black controller right here and press and press plus and then move it closer to the white controller and then make brighter color and then change it to ease and now you can see that we've made the problem a little bit better but now we can select this object press tab and then right click subdivide just once and that will make this composition way better but without making a lot of subdivisions and maybe to remove these ones on these parts we can move this gray controller a little bit farther and now it's working pretty nice so now once we get this we're going to use this same this same texture in order to make the colors of our hand so we're going to select these three nodes that are the one in charge of the displacement and we're going to move it down and then we're going to bring back the the principled bsdf and maybe i'm going to move the principled bsdf to the right to move these ones up and then put the principled bsdf right below because it uses less space like this i'm just going to put them right here we are going to use this color ramp with values to map the textures into our hand so i'm going to press shift a and s and search for a mix shader node right here and plug it after this principled bsdf and now press shift a and search for a glass glass bsdf and plug it into the second socket and then connect 
the color of the color ramp into the factor and now as you can see we've made that the higher parts are glass and the lower parts are the principal PSDF and to change that is really easy just plug the glass PSDF into the first shader and that will automatically change, change what you have so now we are almost finished we just have to change a few things first I'm going to change the roughness of this principal BSDF and set it to 1 so that we have a nicer material right here and I'm going to change the color of this material to black and then select the glass BSDF and change the color of this I'm going to set it to pink color and I'm going to set the roughness to a value of 0.3 maybe and maybe I'm changing the color back to white because I think I like it more like this and when you get these imperfections in the material it's because you don't have close enough this gray socket or maybe you have it too bright so I'm going to make it a little bit darker and you can see how now we get some imperfections back but we can fix that by getting this controller a little bit farther away now in order to animate this thing we're going to go into the noise texture that we set to 4d and in this w vector we are just going to write number frame slash 150 and now if we press play we can see that our animation is moving right now my computer is working is working a lot since I am rendering and recording at the same time so I cannot reproduce it quite well right now but you surely can see it in your computers so once all of this is done we're going to go back into the layout and maybe for now you can turn off the render view go back into the the solid view and I'm going to turn this hand around R, Z and 180 so that we see the back of the hand and I'm going to add right here an area light I'm going to press G and Z to move it up R, X and 90 to rotate it and then G and Y to move it backwards and I'm going to go from somewhere where I want to look to my composition and press Shift A at the camera and then press Ctrl Alt 0 and then to adjust the place in which the camera was placed put N view lock camera to view and now you can move this as if it was your normal viewport and make sure that it is right in the middle of your scene uncheck this box press N to close that, that tab and now we are going to turn on the render view and now I'm going to press shift A mesh plane press R X 90 in order to rotate this plane we just created then press G and Y move it a little bit back and press S to scale it up this is going to be our background and I'm going to set the color of this background to pink as well by clicking right here in the material properties and then click new and we're going to select the base color and put pink we don't see very well the color of our background and I'm going to first set the roughness to 1 so we're going to press shift A add one final area light that we are going to move to the back pressing G and Y move it up and we're going to set its intensity to 1000 maybe and then press 0 and then just go into the output properties click in this little folder to set the place where you want to save your animation and then just go to render, render animation and let the computer do the work and that's all you would have to do to make this beautiful animation it doesn't take as much time as it looks I tried to explain everything I was doing so that you could understand if you like this video please like and subscribe I will appreciate it a lot if you do it and you also help me a lot so, so just think about it I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.